Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Uh, Today is our topic of discussion, cranial nerve disorders. It is from the neurological emergency. So, in this presentation, mainly we are going to focus on the six major conditions that is, acoustic neuroma, Bell's palsy, glossopharyngeal neuralgia, hemifacial spasm, and then Man Manier's disease, trigeminal neuralgia. So, first one, acoustic neuroma. So, what is mean by neuroma? Neuroma is a benign tumor. It is a benign tumor. So, again, uh, that more specifically that will occur in the nerve. So, it will affect the nerve itself. So, it is a benign tumor that more specifically affect the nerve. Okay. So, again, furtherly still more what is mean by benign tumor? Benign tumor means that is the abnormal growth, but that is a non-cancerous. Okay. Non-cancerous abnormal growth that is called the benign tumor. So, the causes for acoustic neuroma is a neoplasm. So, we told it is a non-cancerous tumor that more specifically that will occur in the base of the brain. So, whenever there is an abnormal growth, whenever wherever there is an abnormal growth, it will uh, compress the nearby organ, right? So, here it will compress the nerve and then it will cause ischemia because of the compression of the blood vessel. It will prevent the movement of the cerebrospinal fluid movement. Also, it will affect. So, uh, this process takes years because the tumor grows slowly. So, based on the size of the tumor, it will cause uh, further complication. The more specifically, it will affect the vestibulocochlear and then facial nerve. So, vestibulocochlear and then facial nerve, those are the 7th and then 8th nerve. 7th nerve is a facial nerve, 8th nerve is a vestibulocochlear. So, by this condition, you can understand what are the clinical manifestations that will arise. Mainly, our auditory canal or ear will take out two major things. One, stability of the person. Second one, hearing. So, hearing sense, right? So, if the uh, problem, acoustic neuroma will occur means that will affect both. So, it will cause balance disorder. Mean the same thing, it will cause unilateral hearing loss. So, whichever affected area, where, uh, whichever area the growth is there, the hearing loss will be there. Unilateral side, headache, tinnitus, and then facial numbness, hearing loss that may occur as an intermittent or gradual manner. So, mainly in our pre-hospital, we have to provide the supportive care, we have to prevent the fall because of the balance disorder and then we have to speak clearly and then look directly at the patient. And then coming into second condition that is uh, the Bell's palsy. So, Bell's palsy it majorly it will affect the seventh cranial, cranial nerve that is our facial nerve. So, we have to understand the first we have to know about the uh, what is the uh, facial nerve action whether that is a sensory or motor. Uh, usually the not usually that is a facial nerve is a sensory and then motor both action it have so sensory ways it have a taste sensation motor ways facial expression so this is the action of the facial nerve so clinical presentation ways the so if the problem occur in facial nerve means that will affect both side so the person will uh, lose the taste of ability lost the ability to taste and then the facial expression also will last. So, the person will see the facial drop will be there, facial weakness, excessive salivation, signs and symptoms of ptosis also will occur. So, these are the things that the facial expression ways by seeing that uh, the, this picture uh, that is little bit uh, that is mimicking like a seize, uh, sorry, stroke like a symptoms. So, in stroke also we can see the slurred speech. Of course, uh, that uh, Bell's palsy also will cause slurred speech and then there also in stroke also we will see the facial drop, right. So, here also we are seeing facial drop and then ptosis. So, the one major uh, di uh, difference that is uh, how we can distinguish between stroke and then Bell's palsy means so, we can assess the extremities. So, in extremities, if the person have a numbness or paralysis, paresthesia means, then you can easily differentiate between which is stroke and then which is Bell's palsy. If the person have a unilateral weakness or in the limbs or any paresthesia or any paralysis in limbs means, extremity means, then that will be a seizure. So, that we have to first rule out in the uh, uh, pre-hospital scenario. If you confirm that is a Bell's palsy means then we have to apply the dressing over the uh, affected area and this step will prevent the further drying of the eyes. So, third condition is a glossopharyngeal neuralgia. So, neuralgia means there is also another term neuralgia means pain in the nerve pathway. So, the pain that uh, all over the nerve pathway there will be a pain will be there. 
So by this you can see means where and all pain will be there. Unilateral pain in the tongue at the base of the throat, sorry, back of the throat means posterior pharyngeal wall in the middle ear and then in the tonsil area. So neuralgia means pain in the pain or pain along the nerve pathway or pain in the nerve pathway. So these are the areas we will see. The pain can last from seconds to several minutes with the multiple episodes possible in a one day. So the aggravating factors or provoking factors are swallowing, eating cold food or drinks, uh, sneezing or coughing, it can trigger the activity. Attacks, management ways provide a supportive care. So uh, next condition is a hemifacial spasm. So it is also mainly affect the cranial nerve 7 that is our facial nerve because of the dilated blood vessels. So again the dilated blood vessel it will irritate the facial nerve 7 and then it will causing the further uh, clinical presentation further complication. So here the clinical presentation is involuntary unilateral facial movements will be the tics, myoclonic contraction, jaw distortion and then facial tremors will be the no pain is associated with this condition. So this is also somewhat it will mimic our uh, seizure like uh, activity. So you have to distinguish between the seizure which is a seizure which is a hemifacial spasm. So how we can distinguish means so you can check the aurorectal, postictal, so everything you have to assess and then uh, further um, investigation we can go through. So and then management wise here also provides supportive care. So and then next condition is a manier's disease. So manier's disease mainly the cause is unclear but the disease is believed to related with an increased fluid pressure within the inner ear. So inner ear the reason because of the increased fluid pressure that is causing the manier's disease. So mainly it will affect the cranial nerve 8. So that is a vestibulocoglia. Vestibulocoglia now basically it is a sensory nerve. It takes part in the hearing sense. Okay, It is take part in the hearing sense. So when if the nerve is affected means so it will affect the hearing. So ability of the hearing or hearing sense it will affect. So the person will feel the hearing loss and sensation of fullness in the ear, unilateral uh, tin, tinnitus and then dizziness will be there. Episodes it can last for 2 to 4 hours and then repeated attacks can cause permanent deafness. So the management again provides supportive care in the pre-hospital. Final one is a trigeminal neuralgia. So trigeminal means Tri means three. So it have a three major branches. One is ophthalmic, second is maxillary, third one is a mandibular zone. So three areas it is supplying. Again, these also both function it have sensory and then motor function it have. Okay. So motor function means facial movements and then uh, mastication. Uh, yes, sensory means it takes part in the taste sensation. So the causes why the causes uh, irritation by an it is uh, somewhat related with an vascular origin not exactly vascular origin that artery lying too close to the nerve that will irritate the myelin sheath means over a time as the artery changes the diameter to meet the blood supply needs this motion can grate the myelin sheath off of the nerve grate means that is a grinding like a uh, accent so it will grate the myelin sheath so if it is grating means the myelin sheath gets off or demyelination will occur so with this, with the insulation partially gone, the nerve can short out, it causing the pain without any trauma in that area. So it involves the trigeminal nerve. So it will affect mostly cranial nerve 5, that is why the name is called trigeminal neuralgia. So clinical presentation wise, the person have a severe shock like or stabbing pain usually on the one side of the face. This episode can last several minutes that um, Frequency wise, it can occur once a time in a day or until the 100 uh, episodes in a day. So it can occur once a time or up to the 100 times also it can occur in a one day. So the pain may abate between the attacks. Abate means uh, in between the, uh, severe, that severity may reduce. So episodes triggered by touching the face, speaking, uh, brushing the teeth, eating, putting on clothing and the wind. Wind also it can affect. Uh, it will uh, precipitate or it will increase the intensity of the pain. So when, whenever the facial activity is there, that will uh, increase the pain. So the management ways we have to, while assessing or while managing, we have to 
avoid to touching the face and then if small amount of oxygen are needed for other reason means then we can consider uh, administrating oxygen via the blow by technique directed at the unaffected side of the face because so the pain will be in a unilateral side so the unaffected side we can administer here we should not use uh, o2 mask hudson mask or nasal cannula because so o2 mask nasal cannula we will anchored by the that strap right though so here already the person have a pain in that area if you are applying more over strap over that area means again it will increase the pain that is why we are uh, giving oxygen by the blow by technique blow by technique means you can see that uh, infant cases pediatric cases we will uh, connect that o2 tubing to tubing alone we will connect and then we will uh, give the oxygen through that uh, with, with the blind manner we will give right so the same thing only we can follow episodes are uh, severe but short lived opiates therapy is not typically uh, needed so the ma pain management means we can go with uh, that our uh, who uh, step ladder pattern so mild means moderate severe based on that category we can treat so do your best shalom